If you recall, we watched a video by Charlie, Moist Critical, about his takes on One Piece. So let me give you a quick lore recap. So I think the last time we saw a video of his, he was in Skypea. He said that Luffy is kind of annoying, if I recall correctly. And I think he was annoyed that they were stuck in the, um, in the, in the snake for a very long time. I think that's, that's what he was thinking at the moment. I saw this pop up and I knew it's 16 hours ago. I saw this pop up and I knew we, we would have to talk about it. He has posted an update. So let me jump right into the update and we'll see what he has to say. Unfortunately, he has pulled a bit of a One Piece moment and he has spoiled uh, the video with the title. Charlie is finally liking One Piece. We have converted another person. Let's see you all say. know me. I'm not a big believer in the paranormal. Ghosts, ghouls, goblins, Whoops. gnomes, Wi-Fi. All just a Honky. bunch of horseradish, if you ask me. And you know what else I didn't believe in until recently? One Piece being good. <laughs> but now everything I thought I knew is crumbling around me. Because I am actually, finally, enjoying One Piece. After two years of committing time to watching this to see if I'll ever enjoy it. I just finished... If someone is willing to commit two years to giving something a shot, big thumbs up. That is my type of energy. I do not drop stuff. If I start it, I'm seeing it all the way through. Water 7 and Innie's Lobby, and I actually really liked those arcs. Now, typically, this is a video I would post on my second channel, Moist Charlie Clips, because that's where I've been updating people on my One Piece progress. Oh. And it's also just a channel where I've been posting I a bunch this. of other weird <clears throat> So go subscribe to that channel. It'll make you more attractive. But the reason I decided Thanks. not to put it on that channel this time is because this, this is, is such this is big a news. pivotal moment. This is big. In my like, I mean, let's be real here. When all of us got to like Water Seven and Nenny's lobby, I think our eyes were opened. It's, it's a big, big tonal shift. Like obviously, everything before was already sort of you know very, very good. I'm surprised that he wasn't super into it by by Arlong Park. That that's what still gets me. But though he made it to Skypea, so clearly he was. My anime viewing career. This is the biggest anime ever made, and biggest manga by extension, and I've never liked it. I've always shouted bah humbug about all the people going crazy about how good One Piece is. But now, after 300-something episodes, <laughs> I'm finally enjoying it. I'd given One Piece so good. many chances over the years to really grip me, and it never has, so I always thought that everyone that was preaching the gospel of One Piece being the best fiction ever produced I thought they were all just a bunch of lunatics. Okay, like, okay, 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 okay. You know what? I have a take just like this. That is Code Geass. I call it Code Mid-Ass. I've watched it, like, how many times have I watched it? Like five times, maybe? The entire thing? People keep saying it's better than Death Note. It's not. There is one thing better than Death Note in Code Geass. is the ending. Everything, everything else is like 10 grades below Death Note. It's not even close. And I keep watching it, hoping that one day I'll be enlightened by whatever people are seeing in it that is apparently so good. Because, like, Death Note is one of my favorite series, right? It has problems, but it's very good. And I'm looking for stuff like that, but it's never happening. So I guess Charlie has been doing the same thing with One Piece. It's just like, I, I want to like this. I desperately want to like this. Which, by the way, that has also been me with Fortnite. Uh, I don't like Fortnite at all. Solar panel but scammers I want to like just it. making up lies. You know, I, I thought that whole concept that One Piece was anything more than dog shit was more made up than the boogeyman. But I decided about two years ago now to really buckle down, grit my teeth, and just some yikes catch takes. up on One we'll Piece see. to see if it ever actually gets good. I was willing to subject myself to some torture with early One Piece seasons in order to see if the grass was ever greener on the other side when we finally reached, like, episode 250. There's a very popular meme about like, no, bro, you have to give it like nine seasons before the show gets good. You have to watch, you know, 400 episodes before you start okay. to like it. You just have to. This is one of those things where I've always been super split, okay? Because the thing is, I have dropped almost every single one of my favorite shows. It is the funniest thing that I've observed in my own personal life. I almost dropped Game of Thrones when I started watching it because I also thought it was weird. I almost dropped Attack on Titan like way back in the beginning. I almost dropped all of these shows. I don't know why, I really don't, but they ultimately turned out to be literally my favorite series because I kept with them, right? They're sort of builders and they only get better with time. But at the same time, I also fall in the camp of give a show a couple of episodes. If you don't like it, drop it, right? This is not your job. If you don't like something, move on. But that's also not me because I'm like, I've started watching this. I want to see it through. Um, 
I, I'm really weird about these things. I know. But invest the time in it, it to is really it get is. the payoff. And my god, that couldn't be more true for One Piece. It took me 300 episodes to finally get to this point. That's not exactly, you know, that's that's not nothing. That, that's a long time spent yes. of not enjoying something before you start liking it. You know, eating vegetables before you finally get to the main course that you wanted to eat. So I understand why people don't usually subscribe to that belief. Like, it's not worth investing that much time into a show you don't even like until, like, 300 episodes in where you get, like, hypnotized into liking it, maybe. I get it. But for one piece... You develop Stockholm Syndrome with a goddamn anime. It's like you watch it 300 episodes. It's like, you know what? Maybe I am liking this. Oh my god, that's such a weird way to think about it. I always say give it a season, like 30 episodes between their show, but if you don't uh, don't like Baratier, I would say it's not for you. Basically, yeah. I don't know. Like, when I recommend stuff to my friends, I do try to say, like, oh, it gets good at this point, but obviously I don't want to spoil stuff, right? Because usually when it gets, like, really good, it's some sort of reveal. Uh, like Vinland Saga, for example. It, like, becomes a completely different show at a certain point. Like, multiple times, actually. You know, and if you sort of drop off before that, you miss the entire point of the story, largely. So, it's hard with these things, right? Because a lot of the great shows need a lot of build-up. Like, a lot of build-up to be great. That is what they rely on, and that is One Piece. The beautiful thing about One Piece is how long it is. You know what? I'll, I'll just say, it's been worth it. I'm not conceding on any of the points I ever made about the previous seasons prior to Water 7, because I still think the pacing was glacial and bad. The outright... He said the pre-time skip pacing was bad. Yikes. Refusal to actually kill any characters outside of flashbacks was cowardly and takes a lot of the wind out of the sails of stakes. This is completely fair. Show. As well this is this is a thing with Oda. I like the fact that he he sort of obviously Impel Down is the perfect example of that, right? It completely resets the world and it could have only been done because everyone was alive. So there is that. But at the same time, I do think characters should die. I think characters should just we should, we need to close the book on certain people. And that should be the end of that. We shouldn't be having debates of whether or not someone who clearly should have died is still alive. So, you know. Well, there's a couple of other arguments I've made a lot in the past that I don't need to just regurgitate here. Up until this point, there wasn't a whole what lot I liked say about, about it Trust other Rosa? than a couple of characters like Zoro and Chopper. And I did like the ally A fellow Chopper enjoyer. Good. Alabasta Chopper's the overall, goat. But on the whole, wasn't really feeling One Piece. I wasn't exactly pumping my fist, getting excited for it. It was a show that literally was a, a sleep aid. Like, this was the cure for insomnia for the first 240 episodes. Like, it was so goddamn boring and generic. I wasn't enjoying it. But then, once I got to Water 7... I think I, think I get the generic argument, and I think it's a bit of reverse causality, if you know what I mean, right? The, the, the reason why it seems generic is because I think One Piece influenced basically every other anime out there, to a certain extent. And it's not it seeming generic, it, it's actually it being the, the original, right? It's sort of the same reason why people go back and watch Sopranos, and they're like, wait, hold on, why is this so similar to Breaking Bad? Well, I mean, that's because Breaking Bad is inspired by Sopranos very heavily. You know, it's that sort of vibe. Seven, things really started to turn up, like a lot of people said. Most people actually, when I was talking about this on stream across my journey, always said that you have to at least get to Water 7 before it gets really good. And I, I can't believe it, but they were right. They it were. It actually is good. So, uh, I'm not just going to repeat all of the things I've said on my second channel about One Piece so far with my updates, so I'll just give you the brief cliff notes. I like some of the characters like Zoro and Chopper. I cannot stand Luffy. He's my least favorite character. And now after finishing mm. Indy's Lobby, he is still my least favorite character. This <laughs> goober only has two modes. It's stupid and then stupid and hungry. And then I guess a third mode when he's fighting. And then he's, you know, at least he's not being annoying. Like he's just a <laughs> grating character. And as I understand it, you either love or hate him. And unfortunately, I'm on the hate him side. I do not I, like- I think, honestly, like, if he doesn't like Luffy, if he doesn't like Luffy by Water 7, I think, yeah, it's literally just a simple, like, he doesn't jive with him. And that's it. Like, the energy of Luffy is just not for him. Because by Water 7, we have seen Stone Cold Luffy. We have seen the Captain version of Luffy, you know? We have seen the goofball plenty of times, but against Usopp, he is the Captain Luffy, you know? And if that didn't convince him that, like, the tonal thing, the tonal switch is supposed to be purposeful, then yeah, I don't know. Because, like, obviously it's the whole Shanks thing, right? Shanks jokes around about being doused in beer, and then my guy's basically trying to kill them three seconds later.
like him. He is very, very annoying, and I get that that's his whole character trait, but so far he has not evolved past that or developed past it at all. And I can never forgive this show for what it did during Skypea, where it's Maybe Marineford and Postwater will convince him? Good point. Good point. Because that is when, that is when, you know, Luffy is forced to run in a wall because of his goofiness. Just put Luffy in the belly of a giant snake, and he stayed there for like 30 <laughs> episodes straight. And just was like left in stupid juice and like in this trance of idiot moron mode where he just kept like punching walls. And he's like, oh, this is such a weird cave. Man, am I ever going to leave this weird cave? Such a weird cave. Like he himself made Skypea almost unwatchable because he is just a perpetual stupid character. It's not that bad. And that's just not that fun to watch, especially when it holds everything back. A lot of the problems are caused because Luffy is stupid. And I think that's just a weak plot point that drives things forward. Or at um, least is that true? Is that true? Is there anything specifically that is caused because Luffy does something dumb? I guess? But nothing is... Uh, like, I think all of these things would have happened regardless, right? Because, I mean, technically you could say Luffy running into anywhere and then the arc happening is technically him being dumb. Because, you know, like, we have a lot of characters who sort of play it safe. Luffy doesn't. So, I don't know. I don't know. Water 7 and 80's lobby. There was a lot of moments where Luffy was literally the reason things went bad because he is dumb. Like, he is just legitimately dumb. And that's it. Like, he's just stupid. Uh, it, being stuck in the belly of a snake for so long is beyond frustrating to watch because it just keeps repeating itself. Ah, oh, this is a weird cave. God, this cave is so weird. Gum gum gatling. Ah, oh, these cave walls are so big. Cave is weird. And then he's finally freed from the snake at the very fucking end. He's like, oh, you guys are, you guys came into the weird cave to save me? You're like, Luffy, it's a snake. What do you mean it's a snake? It's a cave. It's just so, it's so lame. It's so lame. I cannot stand Luffy as a character. There's only like maybe three or four moments where he's been serious. And even then, he's still a bit of a goofball. And that's, I don't know. I just don't really like that kind of character trait. I don't know. I think when Luffy goes serious, he is stone cold. Like in the fight against Usopp, he's not goofy at all. Like my guy literally breaks down in tears moments later. That's not a goofball. I don't know. Hammered in nonstop. But all the other characters so far, for the most part, I do like with Zoro and Chopper being my favorite Zoro because he's just a perpetual badass and he yes. is usually always serious and when he's not, it's actually kind of rewarding to see him lighten up. And Chopper, because I actually really like Chopper's backstory. So far, he's yes. one of the few characters that got yes. a lot of attention given to them prior to Water 7, of course. And I, I liked that. I liked everything about his motivation, his drive, where he's come from and how he grows. Now, we get to Water 7 and every character is getting a lot more to them, especially Nico Robin. The most the mysterious goat. of the, the crew. Goat. And there's a lot of drama that happens with Usopp leaving the crew after the going Mary is deemed insalvageable. They can't, you know, revive her. They couldn't get the, you know, the, the paddles out and <laughs> chalk it back. It was kaput. You know, it's, it's, it's dead. And Usopp is, he's not having it. He thinks Luffy and the crew gave up on the going Mary too early. So Usopp leaves the crew after challenging Luffy to a duel. And it's very emotional. It's very emotional. It is. I didn't like Usopp that much until Water 7. Precisely. Precisely. I thought Usopp was annoying. I thought Usopp was doing the same thing over and over again. I thought he was a waste of space. Oh boy, how wrong I was. And then after, after the time skip, Usopp is the GOAT. Now I really like Usopp. Yes. And by extension, his alter ego, Sniper King. I, like, Who's that? Everything... Who's that? I complained Who's Sniper about... King? Up until Water 7. I don't know who that is. I thought directly addressing Alter Ego? and making better I don't know who that is. Luffy. So I'm getting excited here. The fights are better. Uh, I mean, I did like the Iniru fight from the Skypea arc, even though Skypea is a whole absolutely blue filthy <laughs> ass. But the Iniru fight at the end, I thought was fantastic. And now we're seeing <laughs> a lot more way of great it. fights in these two arcs. So I, I don't know. I've just been really liking it a lot more. Though most of my complaints are still here. I still <laughs> hate how nobody dies nobody yeah, dies fair. in this show outside oh. of a flashback imagine when he finds out that spondum imagine when he finds out that when spondum was broken in half broken in half he survived in what, what in what was supposed to be pure catharsis you know that scene where robin breaks him was supposed to be catharsis it wasn't which is kind of sad you know uh, he 100% watches the dub because there's no way he hates Luffy this much. 
I don't know. Like, I, I, I watched a few episodes of the dub now that I've gotten caught up. And, like, I'm watching back episodes. The dub is really good. I like the dub of One Piece. The dub is really good. I like it. I like it. Um, I really like Zoro's voice actor. Zoro's voice actor is really good in the dub. Only when they're doing flashbacks do they have death so far. There's no real integral character deaths or really emotional moments so far. The biggest culprit, the biggest crime, and this was an affront to God when it comes to bad writing, is in the Alabasta arc getting, when Pell yes, yes. takes like the nuclear yes, bomb that's yes, about to blow yes. up Alabasta. We all know this. Flies Every, it up no one likes the, this. The sunset in order to sacrifice himself, a noble sacrifice. Is there someone who has ever reviewed One Piece and not mentioned this? Like literally a single person who has not talked about this? Sacrifice completing his character arc perfectly, and he does that. Bomb blows up. Everyone's expecting Pell to be and dead nothing because happens. he just ate a goddamn nuclear bomb for breakfast. But then he's not dead. He's still alive. He still lives because they don't kill anyone off in the <laughs> show. And I think that's such a misstep. All of the big bad villains are still alive. Luffy just knocks them unconscious like it's a Pokemon fight. That is underwhelming. I think that's very underwhelming, especially for the Pirate King. You know, the kid who wants to be the Pirate King. The crew, the Pirate Hunter, Zoro. Like, it's just underwhelming. So that complaint is still here, even after Innie's Lobby. But I know there are character deaths coming up. I've been spoiled, obviously, on where the show goes. Because oh. Tiana watched all of it in a short period of time. So oh. I saw a lot of it. And I know there are character deaths that come up, but even still, as of right now, it's just lackluster. Because I always know, no matter what, they're not going to kill off even minor characters. Even characters that don't have a whole lot to contribute, nothing really happens to them. So that always grinds my ass grease. Like, it, I really do still have an issue with that, pulling all of these punches, when it would be a lot more impactful to the story if they would just commit to killing some characters that obviously were being set up for something like that. But anyway, that's probably still my biggest complaint. But overall, Water 7 and Innie's Lobby Hello, have Mama. done wonders for making this show enjoyable. The villains are much more interesting here. It's introducing a ton of new, deeper, underlying issues that are going on in the world around them, even outside of the... Yeah, I think, I think world building around this, like around Water 7 and stuff, gets really, really good. Because... Has he seen Post in his lobby? Because if he's seen Post in his lobby, then his mind is about to, or rather, if he hasn't seen Post in his lobby, then his mind is about to be blown. He knows about Ace's death. That's a yikes. That that's really sad. Yeah, because like the whole purpose of Marine Ford is is to force Luffy into a wall. It's unfortunate problems. that he knows about the it. The overarching plot continues to get bigger in the scale and scope of it, so it's just finally being. <laughs> interesting and not just a slog or a tedious chore to get through the reason it's taken me two years to even get this far into the show is because i would constantly fall asleep throughout these episodes so it would take me like a month two months or even sometimes three months to finish a single episode because every time i put it on it would put me three months to finish a single episode that's a yikes get asleep it was more effective than night quill like, some of these episodes in the other arcs were just so meaningless and so boring. Like, it just, it, it, I wasn't, I wasn't invested in it. And there is still some of those sins committed even in this arc, in these two arcs. Like, for example, in the middle of very high-stakes stuff, when they're working to get Nico Robin back on the crew after learning the truth about why she betrayed them, in the middle of that... There is, I think it's four episodes of just flashback filler in the middle oh, of yeah, like I mean, this that's... extremely important moment with Nico. We, it is what it is. It is what it is. Robin opening up about her past, you know, wanting to come back to the Straw Hats, but can't because of the Buster Order. And during this, like as they're squaring off with all the bad guys and with Nico there as well, they just like <laughs> shoehorn in like four filler episodes. Why? What? I, I will tell you why. Money. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Like, like in the middle of very important stuff. At least I think it was at that part. I, I'm already getting a little. I don't remember yeah. exactly when those. Because I, I used a filler guide at that point. Someone told me that even like this was something that blew my mind, right? Because usually you would have filler arcs and you would have the canon story, right? But apparently, One Piece in some places was like, you know what? We're gonna do a little bit of a um, Trojan horse type of deal, right? And I'm watching an arc. And then I talk about it in a video and people are like, oh yeah, that part's filler. I'm like, what do you mean? This is a canon arc. What do you mean that's filler? And he's like, yeah, it's filler. Like, Long Ring Long Line, obviously the worst example of that. Like, literally half of the arc is filler. 
flashback fillers come in, but I'm pretty sure it's there. And it's just, you know, it's unnecessary. It doesn't add anything. All it does is ruin, once again, the pacing. <laughs> yeah, I wonder where he's watching, right? Like, maybe it's just a hassle to, to skip. Like, if he's watching, like, on a TV on some app or something, I, I don't know where he's watching. Maybe just skipping episodes is just, like, a really big hassle. It's just a pain. And detract from the enjoyment. So there are still those moments here, even in what I consider to be the best arcs of the show so far. But they're much lesser and a lot less egregious. So overall, I, I just like the direction Water 7 and Any's Lobby is taking the show. I'm finally starting to see how this opens up into something very special for the first time. So yeah, I, I'm finally liking One Piece. I know this isn't the most like detailed moist meter review breakdown of Water 7 and Any's Lobby, but... I don't really think that's necessary. All of you watching this have probably already formed your opinions about One Piece, and there's not a whole lot I can do to like change your mind. All I can speak to is what I've found not enjoyable versus enjoyable. And right now, Water 7 and Indies Lobby is exactly what I'm looking for from a show like One Piece. So I'm hoping the coming arcs continue that energy and keep that momentum pumping. Yeah, I really want to see what he has to say about like... I want to, see, I want to see what he has to say about Sabote. I want to see what he has to say about Marineford. I really want to see what he has to say about post-war. Those are like the three arcs that, for me, are really, really interesting to see uh, see from him. Because I think, like, he might be... I, 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 could, I suspect that this is going to happen. He's going to watch Sabote. The crew is crushed, right? Luffy is sent off to Amazon Lily. And he's going to say Luffy is being a dumbass again because he's running around Amazon Lily and just being a goofball, right? I think that's what he's going to say. And then, then we'll see what he what he thinks in Marineford when we actually see like what all of that was culminating into. So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Uh, if he has any negatives about Sabaody, then there's no hope. That's like the perfect adapted arc in uh, in anime from all fronts. He needs to get through the robot first. I mean, Sabaody is perfect across the board, like straight up. Every every single thing in One Piece, uh, not in One Piece, in Sabaody, is placed there with the clearest of reasons. Is perfect, down to the last minute detail. Is perfect. Is the perfect One Piece arc. If you don't like Sabote, like I'm sorry, that's it. That's it for One Piece. GG. So yeah, uh, finally liking One Piece. Uh, that's about it. See ya. Okay, so he's been converted. We have another One Piece fan. That's good. He ha he has problems with the show, just like I do. Character deaths, that's a big one. Uh, characters sometimes being annoying and a little bit too much. Yes, I can definitely see that. <laughs> I do think, I do think like not liking Luffy at all, even by Water 7, that is, that is something I wasn't expecting. Uh, like at all. I mean, he likes Chopper though. That's, that's cool. And he likes Zoro. Because of course. Is there someone who doesn't like Zoro? I don't think so. So that's good to hear. We've converted him. Uh, surprised he didn't say a thing about Robin. I think he generally talks about which is sort of something that is important to keep in mind with content creators in general. Um, sometimes when you like things, you, you sort of scoot past them and you more so focus on the negatives because it's just easier to remember. So I assume because he didn't mention anything about Robin specifically and he said that he liked Water 7, I think it's just mostly positive. So, yeah. 